Welcome back to Let's Go Geo, everyone. If you are starting to collect rocks and minerals, or you want to identify minerals, then you're going to need a few tools on hand. If you want to know the whole range of tools, I just did a video on that. So check that out. You can see the whole mineral identification kit I think you should have. But today, we're just going to focus on one part of that kit, and that's testing the hardness of the mineral. Now, the hardness of a mineral is an extremely useful way to compare one mineral to another, and especially when those minerals are very similar, like when they look very similar in the field, when their colors are similar. You might need another piece, another clue to identify them, and the hardness comes in handy. The very first thing you should have on hand is a field guide for minerals. You want to get yourself some sort of field guide. This is the Audubon uh, field guide for rocks and minerals. And the reason you need this is because this has all the information about all your minerals. So, for instance, there's all the information, but your hardness is right there. And if you're finding minerals in the field and you start uh, deciding what the hardness is of a mineral you found, well, then you can look it up in this book and double check, does that match? Is that supposed to be the range of the hardness of that mineral. So get yourself a field guide. It, some of these, like this one, also has some really nice colored pictures that just kind of help you compare the crystal form that you've found. Next, you want to start getting some sample minerals. Now, of course, once you start collecting, you'll have these samples. You can also purchase some basic kits that have a few of the key mineral samples in those. So you might want to just get that when you're first getting started. Next, you definitely want to have on hand an actual hardness scale. Now, what we use here is the Mohs Relative Hardness Scale. The Mohs Hardness Scale was developed in the 1800s, 1822 by Friedrich Mohs. And it's a relative scale, meaning you're comparing one mineral to the hardness of another mineral so you would say this mineral can actually scratch this mineral, which can scratch this mineral. It's on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being talc and 10 being a diamond. So, again, you can buy a hardness kit. You can um, actually just p purchase or print a hardness scale like this. Or you can draw it like I've done here. But it should have those key indicator minerals there, like talc is typically the example for a one, and as you can see, it goes up gypsum, calcite, up from there, quartz is a seven, and diamond is a ten. So, you can compare minerals this way, and you have a quick field guide uh, to use. So, get yourself a Mohs scale, and then let's talk about the actual tools. So, the tools you use in a hardness, let's look at the scale again that I have here. Uh, what you'll have is, it's nice to have on your reference sheet these tools. Okay, the first tool here is actually just your fingernails. You don't have to buy anything. You should have a fingernail, and therefore you'll have something that's around a 2.5 in hardness. So you know that that fingernail can scratch the things below a 2.5, and on this scale we see gypsum and talc are examples. Let me put this down here. This is a mineral here, and watch. Clearly, I can make scratch marks on it with my fingernail, so I know it's softer than a 2.5. And some of the other clues that I can use to analyze this have told me that this is actually a piece of gypsum. However, if I pick up this mineral, you can see that's actually breaking my fingernail there. The white that you see is not me being able to scratch this. It is scratching my fingernail. This mineral is clearly harder than a 2.5. Another nice thing to have in a hardness kit is a pre-1980s penny or a piece of copper. Now, this is about a 3.5 hardness, so I can, I should be able to, if this is gypsum, which again is about a 2, I should be able to scratch this with a penny. Let's have a side here and see. Clearly, I am scratching it and powdering it into my hand there. So, yeah. That clarifies that this mineral is certainly less than a 3.5, and as we've seen before, I actually scratched it also with my fingernail, it's less than even that. However, if I found, say, this mineral, and I thought maybe it looked like gypsum, 
and I looked it up in the book and gypsum was supposed to be around a two and I took my copper penny which is about a 3.5 and I kind of scratched it and I had trouble scratching it, which I am, then I would go, oh, well, it can't be gypsum. Next, if you need something that's going to be around a 6.57 range, then a piece of hard steel, like a steel file, or a ceramic tile comes in handy for those tests. And as I've already mentioned, minerals themselves can be great tools to have in your kit because by using your field guide, you can know exactly what their hardness or range of hardness numbers should be. For instance, we know that here calcite should be about a three and quartz should be about a seven. So if I have a mineral and I can scratch it with my quartz, I know that it's less than a seven. Maybe it's feldspar or fluorite. However, if I actually try to scratch the quartz and, it, and the mineral I have scratches quartz, I know that it's actually harder than a seven. So perhaps it could be topaz or even diamond. Also a piece of window glass will come in handy. Quartz should scratch a piece of window glass and glass is usually about a 5.5, .5, but quartz is a seven. Now typically you'll see a hardness scale or testing uh, reference and it will mention that to test some of these harder minerals, the eight, nine and 10, category that you actually use other minerals themselves. You use minerals that are harder than them to see if they scratch them. There's less objects that are of that higher hardness, but a drill bit is one thing that you might be able to easily get your hand on. And there's different types of drill bits, but a drill bit can be harder than an 8, 8.5. So that will be another great thing to have in your hardness kit. So there you have it, all the tools that you need to get started testing a mineral's hardness and you're on your way to actually identifying what mineral that you've found. And if you want to know other tips on how to identify minerals aside from just the hardness alone, because there are some other ones like testing a mineral streak, identifying a, a crystal form, and a few other specialty things, then check out the video I just did on identifying minerals and building a mineral identification kit that'll get you on your way at actually IDing the cool mineral that you found and actually help you to learn where to find the minerals you're looking for. Other than that, I will see you guys next time here at Let's Go Geo where we'll talk more about minerals and crystals and fossils and all things geology. See you guys. Mm -hmm.